Hey YouTubers, got a killer video for you guys today. I'm in Knoxville, Tennessee at the Mechman Alternators and I'm going to do a little shop tour and I'm going to take you guys around back and I've already got my truck back there and we're going to be doing an install on the new 370 amp billet alternator for the 2014 to 2018 GM trucks. So stay tuned. This is going to be fun. Follow me. So here we go. I'm doing good, man. Uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, let's go check out your truck, man. All right. Let's take a walk through. Awesome. See where your alternator was born. Maribel, Ephraim, over here building everything that you see inside. Everything gets checked. Oscar, Lopo, Dino. How's, how's it going, guys? Barry, mad scientist. There's the man right there. <laughs> All these, this is, this is not a busy day. This is normal day for These are getting ready to get boxed. Those are getting ready to get boxed. Wow. Those two and three, check four. Oh man, those are sharp. Look at all these different colors. This is our cleaning station here, tumbler. Take care of anything that needs cleaned up, shined up. Inspection after cleaning. Random guy parked this truck here. Uh, <laughs> we figured we just install an alternator on it. I uh, needed more amps, so that's what we did. Has one of our black billet 370s on it. Yep. Utilizing the green belt fleet runner. It's the part number, guys. And a lot of people ask. On these two pin style alternators, how, how does all this work with the factory voltage sensing? Well, this right here is your culprit with this purple, purple pin. This is basically an amp clamp for the computer. This tells the computer that it needs voltage or it doesn't need voltage. So you may not notice it with a stock alternator, but your voltage will fluctuate slightly very slowly because the alternator is not very big as you can see on the work table over there small case so when you install the bigger alternator it can fill that battery up much quicker so while you may see your voltage gauge go from 12 to 15 15 when cold 12 maybe running down the interstate or just cruising um, that is normal that is the way GM intended it. There's nothing changed. You're still getting what you need. It's no problem. What we have to do when we wire these, you have your power wire. Everybody knows you have to have the power wire. Everybody upgrades the power wire. On these newer 14 up trucks, you have this box. As usual, things get more complicated as they get, as they get newer. The best way to hook these up you want to find the most solid place. So what we recommend is using this stud with our clip on the very bottom because it's making the most contact on the metal. That's what you want. You want all the power through there. You always put your biggest clip on the bottom and then anything else goes on top. This is just your factory piece. The size of wire doesn't really matter due to the short distance. Um, you can change it if you want doesn't do anything except give you a lighter wallet. But the way we've got this ran, you can also see one single ground wire. One single ground wire is all you need. 
at the right size. You don't need five, you don't need a block with 12 on it. You just need one good quality wire. All it has to do is run right back through this RVC sensor and then it goes straight to your alternator. There's also one little wire that's a ground for the vehicle. It will easily fit through that loop. You gotta have those two. If any grounds you have are not running through this sensor, it's gonna cause weird things to happen. Low voltage, maybe a charge light, uh, something. It's simple. You run it through the loop, ground on the battery, very, very easy install. There's no need to complicate it. Simple is best. Uh, everything zip tied out of the way. Uh, we did have to clearance the back just a little bit, but these are uh, simple wire cutters, with razor blade, no big deal. Uh, same thing on the back, just a little clearance. Goes right back on. Click. There we go. <laughs> All right. Now, but, what, he, what he was talking about was right here on the back of this this cover, they had to notch it out for that zero gauge wire. I don't know if you can see it, but they just took some dikes and, and cut a, a little a piece out of that, and the zero gauge fit right through there. And I don't know if you guys can see, but that, that ground loop is right in there, and you can see that that uh, zero gauge and then that other, what gauge is that, Tony? Oh, I would 10 gauge. Like maybe uh, a 10 gauge wire. 12 is going through there as well so now one reason why i chose uh, the wiring that i did which it's new concepts on a wire is because the jacket on the wire is a little bit smaller than most of the other uh, brands of wire so I, I figured it would be able to fit through that that loop um, the best plus you, you've got to have that other that wire in there as well so it worked out great and thanks to new concepts for sending that wire and and Gates for sending that belt out to me. I appreciate that. All right, guys, now we're gonna show you an alternate way how to hook up the alternator. We already showed you the first way where you go through the ground loop and you're gonna get some fluctuation on the uh, voltage. Tony's gonna show you another way for the hardcore guys that want full power. Cool. Guys, Tony, McMahon. Um, now that these 05, this applies to your 2005 up uh, GM trucks, uh, Tahoe, Suburban trucks are all the same. A lot of these are getting older now, so they're being more affordable. People are buying them. And those people are uh, old school guys that remember the old GM four pin uh, regulator that's been around for ages. It's tried and true, just like all the old stuff. It's uh, old tech, but it works great. Uh, fairly problem free um, on these. Uh, you really just need one wire. One wire activates your alternator, turn it on and off. So, on these 05 trucks, this isn't on the website or anything, you need to call us, email tony at mechman.com. Uh, I can go over it again or explain it a little further if, if the way you need to, but a lot of people don't like the fluctuation that they see on these trucks. Uh, generally, when they crank it up in the morning and it's cold, you'll get your 15 volts. And then as you're cruising through the day, um, you may see this thing drop to 12 volts or, or whatever the resting voltage of your battery is, 12.4 or 6, uh, whatever it is. Uh, so it's basically the computer telling the alternator to turn off. And that's for a fuel economy, right? Fuel economy. we got to get that extra one mile per gallon. Everybody has to get that. So probably they get the extra credit uh, on a tax break. But... What we like to do for the people that are throwing amps, throwing subs, doing everything, trying to get that last tenth out of it, or just really don't want to deal with the fluctuating voltage, like I said, this isn't on the website. You'll have to call in and ask about it. But we just use a regular old style GM four pin. You can see this was the two pin. It'll look just the same, two pin, but we'll install this four pin. So once you install this four pin, this will leave you with the one wire harness. You plug that in and you'll run your one wire over around, uh, you want this to a 12 volt switch source. So it needs to stay hot when the vehicle is on and stays on. There's some accessories in here that will turn on with the vehicle and then turn back off. So 
you don't want that. You got to use a multimeter or have an educated person with you to tap into your fuse box on the right side. Um, generally, there's one around. Um, you can go through the schematic on the back. Um, anything pertains to switch 12 volts or um, anything that's just running that needs to be running when the vehicle's running, that's really all it needs. It doesn't matter the voltage, just as long as it's telling it to turn on and off with the key. So once you have that, you'll have all this plugged in and you're like, well, I don't want to check battery light. I don't want to check charging light. I don't want any battery lights at all in my nice brand new truck that's brand new and uh, people don't want to see it. Some people don't care about that. We understand that. That's no problem. Well, what we have is a uh, little trickery device that we've come up with that makes the computer think everything is just fine. So what you would do with your four pin, you'd simply install the right way. You'd simply install this and just zip tie it out of the way because it's not going to be used. And then you would simply have your four pin running as basically a standalone system. So the alternator would be its own entity. And with this, you'll get the old school 1996 to 2004. 14.5 volts is kind of the resting point when it's warm. Um, when it gets hotter, you know, your Arizona people, California people, if it dips to 14.3 or 14.4 and it's 120 degrees outside, don't freak out. That's just how electronics work. It's just how they work. Um, colder climates, generally when you start up in the morning, you'll get your 15 volts, sometimes a couple higher, but it's going to rest like your real world, real world test. You're going to be 14, 5, 6, 7. All vehicles are different. All temperatures are different. That's how electronics work, temperature based. So that's how it works. You no longer have to deal with the fluctuating voltage. You don't have to deal with the battery light. You basically plug it in, one wire, and you're done. And if you have any questions, email us at MechMan. Uh, call us at MechMan. My name's Tony again, Tony at MechMan.com. If you need me to walk you through it or send you pictures or whatever you need, just let me know. Uh, this is what we do. Um, don't just sell alternators. We educate the customer on why they need what they need. Uh, it's not as simple. It's just putting something in, putting bolts where bolts go. Um, sometimes it's a little more than that, and that's where we step in. Uh, we know what we're talking about. Uh, we know what works. We know what doesn't work. <laughs> we see a lot of what doesn't work. So we're here to educate the customer on how to do it the right way and have a problem-free alternator install so you can enjoy your nice new vehicle and worry about something else not alternator-related. So, again, thanks, guys. Hey, this is Tony at McMahon. Give you a quick tech tip on installing a very nice, expensive alternator that you pay a lot of money for and want it to look good. This is a nice 370 billet unit for your 14 up uh, GM trucks. And you really don't want to mess this thing up. This is really beautiful, really beautiful. Thanks to Steve Mead on this. He's the creator. So a quick tech tip is to watch this. Watch how easy this alternator is to install. It literally falls into place. And the only reason it does that is because these bushings from the old alternator are pressed in to hold the old alternator. So all it takes is just a simple turn to loosen them up with some pliers. They're just press fit, there's no threads. I move these maybe a millimeter or two and you see the result. It drops right in. There's no beating it with a hammer, please. No beating with a hammer. There's no wedging it with a hammer. There's no prying on it. This is literally a drop-in installation. You have all the room in the world to use once you move that literally one or two millimeters. Take two minutes out of your install. Do it the easy way. Thanks. All right, guys. I just left Meckman Alternators a couple hours ago and, and uh, had a an hour and a half drive back home and i just like to say man those guys really know what they're talking about they're very knowledgeable and you know these guys are the experts uh, when it comes to uh, your charging system 
And uh, one thing that I wanted to make mention of is the uh, 370 amp alternator we put on the, the truck. That thing made 202 amps at idle and then it maxed out at 386. So, I mean, this thing puts out more than advertised. And so anyways, I just wanted to say thanks to uh, uh, Tony and Derek and the owner, Matt. Now, all those guys were very nice and uh, you know, I really appreciate them. And again, I'd like to thank the guys over at uh, New Concepts. Right there, there's their name and their website. Uh, these guys sent me over the uh, zero gauge oxygen free tin wire. And then I'd like to shout out to Gates for sending me this uh, Fleet Runner Micro V belt. You can see the part number right there. And this is their, their heavy duty line of belts. Now I will say that this belt here, this part number, is for a seven rib belt. And I know that the, uh, the engine there is a six rib. So um, I had to take a razor knife and cut one of the ribs off. And it's very simple. It took me just a couple minutes and you can see that, uh, you know, it works perfect. So anyways, until next time guys, appreciate you watching. Please like and subscribe to my channel and uh, make sure you hit that notification bell and I'll bring you more future videos just like this one. And until next time, guys, thanks for watching.